Welcome to part three of the series on how to create a dynamic map in Excel. In part one we talked about how to create the shapes for your countries or uh, uh, states or whatever your application is. Also how to name this, the, the shapes. So in this case uh, you can see up here it's Scotland and England etc. In part two we focus on how to create the dynamic metrics based on the selector box that we created. So you can see if you watch these values here, they change based on the selection I choose. And then also how to create labels for each country that is also dynamic. And you'll see those values change accordingly. So in this, uh, in part three, let's focus on starting the process of creating the macro for the shading of the individual countries. And to give you an example, here's my original US map. As I select the component, it changes the shading based on a range. And you can see the, the, the range down here. And you can see also that the range, the range changes. So you can see the max here is 1.3 million. This will actually change based on my selection. So I can make a dynamic range also. And I'll show you how to do that. So I've created a new tab called Shading Macros. And to create a new tab, you can click the plus sign, uh, and then you can just rename it by right-clicking on it, rename, etc. And I've gotten a head start, but I will go through each one of these components to uh, make sure you fully understand what you need to do for your application. Let's focus in this area here. So in this instance, we're going to basically capture these metrics right here. Okay. And so you'll put the country names. All right. And it's, it's very important that the names you have on this particular sheet, especially, correspond exactly to the names of your shapes. And for example, in Northern Ireland, see there's no space. If I click on Northern Ireland up here, you see the name. It's also no space. So it needs to be exactly whatever you name the shape. Here on this page, it's not so, so important. But on the macros page, you need to make sure it matches. Okay. For the metrics, I simply uh, told it to reference the metrics corresponding metrics cell. Okay. And so just equals, and then, oops, click on the cell. And so you'll notice these will change based on the selector box as uh, as well. So now it's 1.5. And now it's 500. Okay. The next step is you have to name this data set and don't include the headings or anything like that. And, and so if you had more data here, more countries or more states or whatever the case is, you just make sure you highlight the entire data set, excluding the headers, and then you'll name uh, the table basically. And you do that. So once you have it highlighted, and you can see I've already done it, but I'll show you how to do it again. But in this box, upper left-hand corner, you can just type in the name like that and push Enter. And so now if you hover over it, it's now always called Reg Data. Next component over here is we need to, uh, in this column, input the actual shades themselves. And so uh, I currently have six. You can have as few or as many as you need based on your ranges of data. But so, for example, in this value, I have uh, just shaded white. And then I have a series of blues going in uh, ascending order of value. And then I ran out of blues, so I just put purple. But you can, you can do as many or as, as few as you want. And you can use any colors. So in this case, you just click on the cell and then enter the corresponding uh, color you want for that range. Okay. The next section would be the value, and this is uh, really the range. And so uh, you want this to be, be dynamic. Unless your data ranges are fairly static, um, you'll want to make this dynamic. And I, I'll show you why. So you see here, um, if you add all of these together, we have 5.5 million. But then if I click on all, now the value is 34 million. And so the range that works for uh, the other data set, unemployed, 
it's not going to really be applicable to uh, a, a data set where you're basically quadrupling the total values. Okay, so you need to make this range dynamic in most cases. Uh, you're going to go from uh, the lowest value to the highest value. And what I do is uh, for this first shading, which is white, I put in a value of zero. Okay. For the next value, I, I just click on one or enter one. And that way, anything with uh, that's above one is going to get at least some level of shading. Okay. And for the next one, uh, this is where the dynamic range really comes into play. So these two can be static, zero and one. These will be uh, dynamic. And what I use is uh, a median. And you'll see it down here. So I have a median, which is the average of this data set. And so you see now here the, the median is 1.1 million. If I go back and select the other data. Now the median is 6.8 million. Okay. And so I made this particular one, so kind of the mid mid point on my range, I made that the median, so I just referenced it to this cell equals this. Okay. And then for the one directly above it, um, and you can play with this to, to get the appropriate ranges, but I just made it 75% of this cell, which happens to be the median. And uh, let me just demonstrate that. So equals this value times 0.75. Okay, and so no matter what how, how this range changes, uh, the median will change accordingly and then this will always be 75% of whatever this value is. And again, you can play around with these. Maybe it's 50% is more applicable, or etc. And then I kind of did the same thing with the next two. So for this one, I said uh, basically this cell times 125%. So you're adding 25%. Okay, and let me just demonstrate this times 1.25. And for this one, I referenced this cell and said this times 125%. So this one, 10.6 million is 25% more than 8.5. And so as you select a different option, all these values change accordingly. Okay. Next we have our classes. And really you don't need to understand what this means. Um, I think you can just follow the example. But the first value will be class 0. And you, you just type it in. And then class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so if you have you know, fewer ranges, you just have fewer classes or more, you have more classes, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so now we need to name, just like we named this data set here, reg data, we need to name this data set. And for this one, we're going to name it CLS values, and I'll put it up here for you. So again, we're going to exclude the headings. Don't care about this. We're just going to capture the data. So make sure you've, you've drag, clicked and dragged over all of it. And then you'll go up to the naming box here and name it CLS values. OK. And so the next part is we have this act reg, act reg value, and act reg code. And really, you don't need to know what those mean or what those are. Um, you can Again, you can just copy this example, but these will be required um, for your macro, which I have uh, pasted down here, and we'll go and we will go through the macro as well. Okay, so for this particular cell, so the cell, basically this is telling you, so this act reg, it's telling you what to name this cell. And so act reg value is telling you what to name this cell, right, et cetera, et cetera, act reg code and we're going to name this one act reg code. So this cell here, we're going to name act reg. Okay. For this one, we're going to name it act reg value. And for this one, 
again, will correspond it to the, the, the uh, cell on the right, so act reg code. And so you notice I've already named them, but um, you can just uh, click in this box, upper left-hand corner, the naming box, and name it accordingly. And make sure it's exactly the way it's spelled out in this cell, okay, because these are going to be in the macro itself. Okay, and now we need for this one, don't worry about it, there's not a formula for this one. For this box here, for the act reg value, there is a formula. Okay, and it is basically the lookup act reg, which you remember recall, and if you click on the formula itself, it will highlight the uh, corresponding data values. So in this case, it's act reg, which is where it says whales currently, reg data, is the table we named over here, right? So it's Northern Ireland all the way down to the 1 million mark here. Column two, because we wanted to pull, base it on this these metrics here, to pull those metrics. Oops. Okay, and then false. That's just telling if you can't find it, don't return uh, some arbitrary value. And then enter. And so just to demonstrate, if I was to go in here, so you see right now it says 1 million. If I type in uh, England, it changes it. So it's going to look up values in this table here and then change accordingly. Okay. And now we need to type in the formula for this cell here, which is the act reg code. And the lookup. F16, so in which, the, in which case is the act reg value here. CLS values, which you recall is what we named this data array here. Column 2, and then true in this case. All right, not false, it needs to be true. Okay, so basically what this this all of this is for is to look up the appropriate shading right so these color schemes based on the value of the corresponding country so in this case England right the value is 2 million you'll see up here 2 million and now we're telling it go find the closest value um, to that to that closest value in the range to that data set in this case, it says the closest is class 5, so 1.7 million. So basically, any value above 1.7 million is going to return class 5. And in the macro itself, that's going to tell it to then go find this shade and apply that shading oops, to the corresponding um, shape in your map. Okay. So let's stop there. That's, that was a lot to absorb. And so now uh, we'll go into a little more detail on the actual macro formula itself. And this will take a few minutes, uh, take quite some time to kind of go over. Um, and then after part, this will be part four coming up. And that should complete the series. And so uh, hopefully at the end of part four, our dynamic map uh, will work and uh, be ready for uh, prime time.